Hi, I wanted to talk to, uh, to you about uh, the second law of thermodynamics and its application to evolutionary theory. Now it is often stated that the second law contradicts evolutionary theory uh, as it states that disorder should approach a maximum. It's been shown before that disorder is actually not a good way to describe entropy um, by other YouTube, YouTube users in other videos and I'll provide some links to the right. So let's first try and find a useful definition for entropy. A way to describe entropy would be to say that it is a, um, a way to indicate to what extent the energy levels in a closed system have been equalized. A low entropy means that there is a high potential between differing energy states and a high potential in turn means that there is a high capacity for performing work. The second law of thermodynamics states that entropy must always increase to a maximum as long as no energy is added to the system. Now take for instance a nuclear reactor. A nuclear pile uh, uh, generates a high energy level in the interior of the plant and the energy differential between the interior and the exterior allows the generator to produce electricity. Dampen the reaction and the energy states start to come to an e equilibrium uh, and the capacity for work is lost. So, the entire universe could be seen as an engine for maximizing entropy. The gravity causes stars to be born and start heating up, and the second law dictates that their energy must flow outward in the form of radiation. It is known that whenever a potential, a, low, a situation of low entropy exists, uh, energy will always flow from the high end energy side to the low energy side, um, using the path of least resistance. This teaches us that the second law of thermodynamics does not only mean that entropy will increase to a maximum, but that entropy will increase to a maximum using the fastest, most efficient way possible. A simple experiment will allow us to conclude a couple of things, um, and you will only need uh, some water, a pot, a heating element, and of course the observer. You fill the pot with water, you put it on the heating element and start heating up the water. Now, the water will channel the heat of the heating element into its surroundings. Presumably it will do so using the most efficient way possible. But as the heat of the heating element exceeds the capacity of water in its normal state to allow the flow of energy into the environment, um, you'll see that the water starts turning to gas. So, yes, gas is a high entropy uh, situation. It's little to no ordered structure, it's all homogenized. But what happens in the pot of water until it is so? Indeed, ordered structure appears. Where there was first a relatively uh, high entropy situation in which uh, water with little to no order conducted heat through Brousian motion of its molecules, an ordered structure of convection cells appears to allow heat to be more efficiently channeled into the environment. And the thing with convection system is, by the way, that they're self-maintaining. Once the heat potential has started up a system of convection cells, the, the system shapes and maintains itself as long as the heat potential is sufficient. So we conclude this. 1. Ordered systems are more efficient at maximizing entropy than unordered systems. 2. Ordered systems will appear spontaneously in situations of low entropy and high potential. So there you have it. The second law of thermodynamics does not prevent life from forming and ev evolution from happening. In fact, the second law of thermodynamics demands that ordered, self-maintaining structures appear to maximize entropy with maximum efficiency.